the get money out of politics meme has already been implanted into the Occupy movement's rhetoric directly by CNBC news anchor Dylan Radigan in a speech he gave using the people's mic or mic check method in their first few months after OWS began in New York City. Radigan guaranteed an assembled crowd of protesters who all repeated his words back to him phrase by phrase as he spoke that the get money out of politics message was in the pike and that the New World Order is nothing but wrestling, referring to the WWF's New World Order titled branch. Of course, he was probably just hammered after work and thought shouting at a crowd would help him blow off steam. Nevertheless, the get money out of politics meme has wormed its way into the OWS and even Ron Paul quote bot rhetoric and is being mentioned as a phrase in the MSM. This much is fact, but it may be an attempt to plant a New World Order sided Trojan horse inside the OWS and Liberty Message rhetoric made by the Bilderberg Group, who themselves may at this point be an abandoned shell group, as Japan embedded journalist Benjamin Fulford has proposed, while the real elites are holding conferences elsewhere at some other time as Fulford forwards this June with the White Dragon Group representing the interests of Japan and the Japanese. On March 11, 2011, a tsunami struck Japan, which Fulford has long claimed to have been man-made, ordered by Obama and broadcast from HARP, and which resulted in the ongoing meltdown of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. This event causing radioactivity levels to have risen to double their normal rate in California, USA, Pacific Ocean, coast caught fish, combined with the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico and the toxic rust-red iron-rich sludge spill in Germany, have all been ignored by the MSM. Instead, uncontainable wildfires in arid Nevada, Arizona, and Colorado, USA, as well as tornadoes and hurricanes along the southern and eastern USA Atlantic coasts, still capture the MSM's attention more. Ultimately, if the New World Order want to allow anything to happen, it can, including their own gradual transition to a more rational policy. Quickening plans in process for implementing a gold coin one world currency. There will be a one-world currency. 99% of the population, including 98.5 of the OWS's 99%, and one-half of the remaining 1% of the rich elite New World Order, agree it is inevitable. The OWS's 98.5% don't want the one-world currency if it includes a world bank to which we all pay taxes. The New World Order's 0.5% want just that. But both the OWS's 98.5% and the New World Order's 0.5% believe the global economy is going to morph into a one-world currency sooner or later, whether they are for or against it personally. This 99% of the whole are thus totally disempowered in the equation, and the only ones left with the balls to even discuss the issue seriously are the remaining 1%, who include 0.5% from the OWS side, comprised of real people, and the other one half of the 1% from the New World Order of Rich Elites. So if this other 1% comprised one half from OWS and one half from the NWO, has done the math on their negotiations, then they still know the only feasible model for a global currency is gold coins, because paper cash and digital credit are headed toward a goal, the implant chip, they can never reach, because their collateral resources have all been traded away and not even all their cash or credit in all their empty vaults and computer databases will buy them a loaf of bread. In short, 
the result of their attempting to incrementally encroach their technologies into the global marketplace. And their other tactics of revolution, including economic shock testing of multinational big bank bailouts and their essentially socialistic communist premise of basing global currency on fiat debt rather than on any solid commodity, prevent them from achieving their goal. They run out of money before they can fully implement their plans. So far, no economy founded on fiat or counterfeit currency has sustained even so long as the present global economy, standardized down to values in U.S. dollars, measured as value-depreciating Federal Reserve banknotes, redeemable in bullshit but nothing more. Ultimately, we have to figure out a way to use gold coins as the global currency, and this trick might not be as easy without him around as Ron Paul makes it look. Least likely outcomes given historical dialectics. If Ron Paul does not win the Republican nomination, even by writing, if he has been killed by the establishment, or his personality cult discredited, and Mitt Romney, even with Rand Paul, Ron Paul's son, Republican Senator from Kentucky, as his vice presidential nominee. And either Romney or Obama is the next president. Following 2012's election cycle, then this world will end on April 15, 2029, when Apophis strikes planet Earth. Ron Paul already knows about the plans for surviving such an event being privileged to the daily reports of the CIA as a member of Congress, and being intelligent enough to piece their plans together and make a reasonable prediction for their motives. It is unknown, by me at least, if Ron Paul is aware of the asteroid Apophis's predicted impact date in specific, although it is known, by me at least, that this is a pretty obvious secret being kept within the intelligence community who are tuned into NASA since NASA was complicit in covering the 2029 impact date up with the fake gravitational keyhole scenario story. Perhaps Ron Paul is aware of this, but has simply chosen to believe NASA's false scenario and 2036 potential impact date. Either way, if he doesn't know it, or if he knows about it but is misinformed by his sources, the result is the same. His patience as a person has allowed him to believe there is enough time for people to prepare to deflect Apophis, or rather to avoid Armageddon and World War III in general, to cure a global economic meltdown, etc., when many, many people would disagree with him about that. Perhaps he is only allowing himself to be used as a political pawn in some vague hope that it will help the liberty message whose torch he carries. Or perhaps he knows we are all doomed either way, and was only trying to provide a glimmer of hope to the damned, no matter how futile doing so may be. But nevertheless, it is in the period of time between December 2012 and February 2013, which would be the first month of Ron Paul's presidency, that the asteroid Apophis 99942 is closest to Earth and thus would be easiest to deflect from its present trajectory using a short-range probe. It is our best shot at being able to deflect it, and neither Obama nor Romney have the guts to send this mission. They would rather say, do it later. Ron Paul alone would be busy enough working on restoring the U.S. and hence the trickle-down global economy, allowing us to be able to do it later, because under Romney or Obama, that later would never come. The IMF suing the U.N. for recognition of sovereignty to implement global martial law. Worst case. The USA can and should, but probably will not, regardless of who is U.S. president next, just renege on paying back its outrageous and imaginary debt? 
it can simply dissolve and repossess all the holdings of the Federal Reserve Bank. The Fed has fought long and hard for the Independence Clause in its charter entry in the Federal Register. It is a government-sponsored, not owned, enterprise. This means the government uses the Fed as its sole banker, but that the government can effectively fire the Fed as such and hire any other bank to perform the Fed's duty or even abolish the use of a central bank in the USA altogether. Ron Paul's Restore America Now budget plan represents almost a final chance for the government to abolish its debt and still be allowed to fulfill its duty and obligation in the eyes of the law without simply declaring federal-level government bankruptcy to the Fed and thus passing ownership over the government's authorities to the private owners of the U.S. Central Bank. If we, the U.S. people, do not elect Ron Paul, the result will not be lawful and will thus prove much bloodier. If the U.S. government does, as I would say it should, renege on its debt to the Fed and dissolve the institution, of a U.S. central bank entirely, repossess its gold and distribute that as their currency, then everything will be the same in the end, but there will not be as bloody a revolution when the Fed rebels against the government's threat to its debt. If the federal-level government of the U.S. defaults on its debt, the Fed will try to collect, but they will not be successful. If the government pays the Fed back, and then dissolves their use, the Fed will have no legal recourse to stage any coup attempt at all. The Fed sponsored the creation of the IMF and World Bank, which has served to line the U.S. Fed's pockets on all the IMF's international aid loans. The IMF is to the U.N. what the Fed is to the U.S.A. The G8 and G20 are to the U.N. Security Council, what the Council on Foreign Relations is to the Federal Reserve. If the IMF is empowered by precedent set in the case of the USA's federal government versus central bank to be allowed by the armies of the world to collect its debt, thus enslaving the peoples of the various nations to taxation, exclusively controlled by and benefiting the IMF, the result is corporatist neo-feudalism. If the IMF is overthrown and its loans taken gratis by all its indentured nations, it will be due to the U.S. defaulting on its debt in any such way as to render impotent the Fed's authority in the USA, due exclusively to their funding the intelligence community's now obsolete black budget and then the world will not end in a bloody revolution nor in global martial law. It might not even end in 2029 if Apophis's trajectory can still be deflected by a probe before then. If the IMF is somehow successful in collecting its debts from all its indentured nations, it will not matter if they allow Apophis to hit us or not, because they will implement global martial law, and then life will not even be worth living. On the other hand, if Ron Paul gets elected, the Fed will not have any say in its being dissolved, and thus the IMF will never be able to collect its debts by enforcing global martial law.